um, and welcome you to our Safaria Deep Dive webinar. I'm Rachel Buckman. I'm Safaria's Senior Education Associate. And with me today is Chavit Semach, Director of Marketing and Communications, and also um, someone new to Safaria, Sari Dubin, who is our um, Senior Marketing Associate. And she's going to be watching and seeing what everybody is doing today. Um, so if you have questions during the course of the webinar, we ask that you please write them in the chat and we will take periodic breaks throughout and, and Chava will um, then ask me the questions that people have so that everybody can hear the answers. Um, if it's something quick, she'll take care of it in your chat. But, um, but uh, usually I find if someone has a question, somebody else has the same question, they just didn't wanna ask it. So I like to do them together. Um, so just as an introduction, I'm sure this is deep dive. So you probably all know that Safari is an online library of Jewish texts. And our mission is to make the core Jewish canon as accessible to as many people as possible. And we do this by digitizing, translating, and interlinking Jewish texts through the generations. Our texts are topically searchable, so you can find the texts that are relevant to you, whether it's from 3,000 years ago or, or as current as yesterday. As the Torah is the treasure of the entire Jewish people, all of our texts are freely available and we've developed tools for you to share your own voices and play your part in the Jewish textual tradition. Today's webinar is called The Deep Dive because we're gonna dive into the library um, and see what wonderful discoveries we can make. In the old days, you would wander through the stacks and now Safaria, you could do it by just clicking through and, um, and so that's, and be part of this wonderful conversation. Um, so we are assuming that people have some knowledge of the Safaria 101 webinar. Um, and uh, so I'll just be briefly reviewing some basic things, but then we're gonna learn how to perform advanced searches. Uh, you're gonna need our newest additions to the library and some of the new tools and features that you might not have known about. Um, I'm going to be working on the website. Um, there are some differences on the app, not so many. In fact, I'm going to tell you about one that used to be a difference and now in this past week um, is now available in the apps. And I think you're going to be excited about that. Um, I'm going to share my screen and then I'm not going to see any of you anymore, but, um, but uh, Chava will. And so she will let me know when someone has a question. And as I said, I'll be taking some planned breaks um, which will be a good time to answer all those questions. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is searching within a book or a sheet. So in 101, we searched for a text and we had three ways to search for a text. One was from the library page and outside could pick a, I could pick a category, I could pick a, a book, um, and if I was here before, I click continue reading and I'm where I was and I can use my A Aleph button to make it look however I want. That was one way we did it. Another way that we did, that we found a text was by typing in the search bar. You could type in Hebrew, you can type in English. So if I wanted this week's Torah portion outside of Israel, I would write, if I knew that it happened to be Numbers 8 verse 1, I would just type it in, press enter, and there I am at the beginning of this week's Torah portion. Um, another way to search for things is through a topic search. And um, I could do it either by clicking topics um, on the top here of the, of the header, or in the search bar, I could write, let's say coming up next is Tishabav. So I could write, I don't even have to write that much. And you see preceded by a hashtag, that means it's a topic page and here's Tishabav and I click on it. And now I have a list of sources and I have a list of sheets that are all on the topic of Tisha B'Av. So that's what we did last time. But this is the deeper dive. And a lot of times people write us and say that they don't want this list of every single book. And we did talk last time how we can filter for books somewhat. But what if you want to look for a search word within a specific text? So. Um, so I can do that by filtering to look in a particular book or sheet. So um, if I put my search category, let's say I'm looking for Tisha B'Av, but I really, this time I'm not looking for the topic Tisha B'Av, I'm looking really for the words. 
and this time I'm doing it in English. You can do this in English or in Hebrew. And I write the words Tish above, and I do not click the topics page. If I go all the way to the bottom to where the magnifying glass is, it says search for Tish above, and it has it in quotation marks. I can put anything in there in Hebrew or in English. And I click on that. And now I get the results of that phrase or that word within a text. And you can see that there's 145 of, of them as sources. And so I might want to uh, be more specific. And let's say I'm interested in um, one of these topics on the side. I'm interested in a particular book. So I can filter on the side text here. I'm going to go to Hasidut. I can um, either click the whole category. And now I only have Hasidut um, sources that have the word in English, Tisha B'Av, in it. Or I can use the drop down menu. And in the drop down menu, I have the books within the Hasidut category that have the word Tisha B'Av. And these, of course, have to be in English because this is an English uh, search that I'm looking for. So if I click on Likutei Moharan, there are two, and here they are. And now I find the two places within the book that I chose that has, um, that has the word Tisha B'Av. So I can do that with any English or Hebrew search word that I would like. And again, I'm, I'm gonna do it now in Hebrew, so uh, it'll be a review. So now either using the Hebrew keyboard that's built in here, or since I have a nice Hebrew keyboard on my computer, I prefer to type that way. I'm going to change to Hebrew and I'm going to do Aseret Hadibrot, the Ten Commandments. Aseret Hadibrot. And again, I'm not going to shorten it. I want the whole thing because I'm going to use the bottom um, option in the quotation marks and I'm going to search for. Oh, that's because I did not uncheck this one. Let me uncheck that. Now I have everything. So I have. Let me refresh that because I. Okay, so now I have 3,353 sources that say Aser Tadibrot in Hebrew. Um, another thing that I can do, and I also also in sheets, and within sheets I can um, I can filter by topics, and I can also filter by collections, and on sources I can filter by text. And I also can do an exact match only. So remember we had like 3,300. If I click exact matches, now I have 1,912. Um, and so that helps me narrow it down. I can do that. And I also can click, um, and I can click more than one. I don't have to pick one book. I can say, I would like in Halakha, I'm interested in Aser Tadi Brod um, here. And also in Midrash, I'm interested in, here and it'll give me um, everything that I clicked. And I can click on, I can click off and get to exactly what I like. Um, so that is how I can search within a text. And as I said, this is something that people write to us about all the time. So it's a really great thing um, to know that you type in the word, you go to the bottom one with the magnifying glass and the quotation marks, and then you start filtering away. So now let's say, that I have, I found in my other search, I found Likute Mohoran, which is great that I found that, but I don't really know what it is um, because I just found it through my search and now I'm opening a book and we want you always to know what the book is that you're reading. So I have it now open. And if I click on the side and have the resource panel open, which is how I always read a text in Safari because that's where all the goodies are. Um, I can click about this text and it will tell me the name of the book. It'll tell me the category, the author. It'll give me a little blurb. It will give me a date that it was written. And we have this for every single text in our library. And although everybody will hit their own point where they run into a text that they don't know, eventually everybody finds a text that they don't know. And, um, and it's important to know what it is that you're reading. So, um, so we can, uh, always look into about this text. And there's more information than just that. There's also will tell you the current version that you're looking at. So if you wanna know what's the source of the Hebrew text, here is the Hebrew text. And it also tells you a license. Now, often people will ask us, 
how can I use or reuse a text? And there is no blanket answer because each text has its own license. And um, so this one, the Hebrew is in the public domain. And if you're not sure what that means, you can click here and it tells you what public domain uh, means, which means that you can use it. There's no um, intellectual property rights on that one. Um, and then you can look at the translation. So you might wanna know who did the translation. You might want to know, and the license for the translation is gonna generally be different. I mean, it could be that it's also in the public domain, but these two are, they're totally separate from each other. And in this one, it has, it's called CC by NC. And uh, before I worked at Safaria, I didn't know what that was and I would have need to, cl to click on it. And there's something called Creative Commons that has, um, that, uh, that wants a lot of things from us, which I click off. Um, but it's a great organization and they are, are standardizing the language for licenses. And this tells you exactly what you can do with it. You can, if it's CC by NC, you can copy it, you can share it, you can adapt it under these following terms. You have to give it attribution. And this one has to be for non-commercial purposes. Most of our, this is a more strict license. Most of our texts have a loose or license in that, that you can use it for anything. But that will tell you what, it's, what the text is that you're looking at. Um, and some of our texts have a link if you wanted to buy this text in print and you click on it. This is not all of our text, but you click on it and it takes you to the website of where it's being sold. This is not Safaria, this is taking you outside. Um, and some of our texts have that. Um, another thing that's important here that you can do is you can also click, you can see it's hyperlinked the name of the author. So if I don't know who Rabbi Nachman of Breslov is, I can click on that. It will go to his topic page on Safaria it will tell you something about him. It will tell you all of the other works on Safaria with a link that you could go right to it. Oh, I like Likutei Moharan. I might be interested in reading his Sichot Haran. Um, it tells you when he lived. It gives you links to learn more about him from Wikipedia, Jewish Encyclopedia. Some of, our, some of the authors have links to the National Library that has some interesting stuff. And then um, sometimes it tells you relatives or students and some top uh, citations. Um, this author page you can get to other ways. Um, if you type, let's say you were to have typed Nachman of Breslov, if you see that there is a quill in front, that means it's an author page. Sometimes people write to us and they say, do you have such and such book by this person? So um, besides that you could always type the name of the work in the search bar, you also could go to the author's um, uh, topic page and you would see um, all of the books that that person has written that we have. It's not everything that the person has written, it's just what we have and then it takes you there through the link. So that's also um, very, very helpful. Um, another thing that I wanna show you, I'm gonna go back to where we were. So we talked about the about this text, which has tons of information. And I urge you to, to look at it because it's interesting to know what it is that you're looking at. Also the table of contents are on the side and this is the way that you can navigate easily through the book um, and you can go to whatever chapter you would like. Um, and depending on the structure of the book, um, the table of contents looks different. So I will show you um, for for the Torah, um, the table of contents page looks different. You can navigate by chapter, but you also can at navigate by Torah portion. So here are all of the Torah portions for the book of Numbers for Bamidbar and divided by Aliyot. So the Torah reading, uh, a Shabbat Torah reading is divided into seven Aliyot. Um, so it's good actually in both directions. So here, let's say I want to jump to the fourth Aliyah. It's a little small, um, I hope you can see. But um, I click on the four and here I am at the fourth Aliyah. But it also works another way for me. Let's say I'm on a text. I don't even know where I clicked. I just clicked and I want to know. And then I want to know, well, what Torah portion is, is it in? I can look in the table of contents. And here I see that this section is the fifth Aliyah of Chukat because five is in bold. And um, so it can help you 
either way to navigate um, easily. Another way to navigate is on the, um, on the homepage, we have the learning schedules and here is another way. Um, and right now Israel and outside of Israel are off by a week and um, your computer, it, it knows where your computer is and it gives you the uh, proper uh, Torah portion. So for me, I live in Israel. Um, and last week when I was at home, um, it actually showed me the halotcha because this was last week's Torah portion. But now that I'm in the United States, um, it, without me having to do anything, now it shows me that, um, that this week is the halotcha. And um, so, it, and it does that also on your app. So that's really helpful. Um, and the last thing I want to show you um, before we take our first question break, uh, we're gonna go back to the Torah reading and um, we're gonna talk about translations. So some works aren't translated at all. Some have one translation and some like the Torah have many translations and you click translations on the side and first it will tell you the one that you've chosen. And then it starts giving you all of these different translations. And we have, lot, these are just the English translations and I can um, click on any one of them and it will change the translation for me. For the Torah, for the first five books, if I choose uh, a particular translation, here's one of our newer ones, the Everett Fox translation, if I choose that, um, and now I go to another book of the Torah, it will, it will uh, go automatically to Everett Fox. So if I choose one for the Torah, it will be for all of them. The other books don't work that way, um, but you always can change them. And I, I like sometimes comparing a translation. How did Everett Fox translate it? How did the contemporary um, JPS translate it? And you can go back and forth. We also have other languages, especially in the Torah or in Tanakh, we have German, Esperanto, Persian, French, Polish, Yiddish. So you can do a lot with changing the translations. Um, I'm gonna take a break for any questions before we move on to some texts that you might not have been familiar with. Any questions, Chava? I, it seems like everyone's questions have been answered already, but if anyone okay. has another question, please feel free to put it in the chat at any time and I will either share it with Rachel or answer in the chat. I have a question. I don't know how to use the chat, sorry. That's okay. Um, first of all, is, is the, are the materials available and all the materials available translated in English? Not everything on the site is translated in English. We have large sections um, that are, if I look here at the, at the uh, all of Tanakh is translated along with um, Rashi, Ibn Ezra, Ramban, and Sforno, um, all translated fully into English. Um, the Mishnah is fully translated. The Talmud, both the Babylonian and the Jerusalem Talmud are fully translated. We are working right now, I'm gonna show you some new translations. We're working, we commissioned our own translation of Midrash Rabbah, which we are working our way through. Um, and some places you'll see, for instance, um, let's look at um, the Mishnah Torah. So, um, so in the Mishnah Torah, we don't have everything translated, um, but we have a lot. So, um, so you'll see, so here, uh, and you can choose in the A Aleph button how you want it viewed. So you could choose to view it only in Hebrew. You could choose to view it only in English and you could choose a bilingual. Now that is only the case if we have an English. So I'm gonna to go to a different, um, a different book of the Mishnah Torah. So we have a lot that is translated, but not everything. Um, let's say, I think probably, I don't know, maybe this one is not, let's try it. Oh, well, no, that is. But anyway, if it weren't translated, you would, no matter how much you click on the A Aleph button and no matter how much you click English, uh, you wouldn't have anything. So this is all we have. I have another question, even more yes. important. Am I, I can't see that well. I, mean, yes. I have a visual disability. Am I able to enlarge the type on yes. the, on the yes. of all your documents? Yes. So you're going to do that through the A Aleph button. So in the top, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't make my cursor bigger, 
but um, you click, you click, I can, you click on, on the top, there's an A Alice button on every single page of Safari. And um, this is where you choose your language. Also, we choose your font size. So um, oh, you click see. on, and you can just, and I suggest that you do it this way as opposed to like using your fingers on the mouse or whatever to make it bigger because yeah, this, keep that. You, this keeps you within the, oh, you know, good. if you do it the other way, it takes you out. You don't yeah. want to do it that way. That's what I need. What you just had in large print is what I need. Okay. So you, so you can, a moment ago. you can do that. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to put it a little bit back. Um, I am going to try to make my, um, I'm going to try to make my, I, I forgot to do this. So if somebody has another question, well, I, I'm just going to make my cursor um, bigger. Uh, Thank pointer. you. Yeah, no problem. I, I find it's easier for everybody to have a bigger cursor. Okay, there we go. Okay. So great. I'm going to move on and I want to introduce you to some text that you might not have known about. Um, I think a lot of people are familiar with our more basic text, but we have some really, really interesting, great things that, um, and so I wanna introduce you to them. So as I mentioned in Midrash, I'm gonna click on that, and we have Midrash Rabbah, and we have commissioned um, a new Midrash Rabbah translation, and we uh, have Esther Rabbah, which we had ready for, in time for Purim, and um, this is, uh, and also in the about the text part, you can see it'll tell you about the translation. So it can shows you this was a project that's done by um, the editor, the managing editor is Rabbi Jason Rappaport, who has a great history of, of a lot of experience of of, uh, of translating for Korean and other places. And the translators, the editors, the copywriters, um, and this has a CC by, which means that you can. Um, use it, you just have to um, give attribution. And it's a wonderful new translation. So we have that for Esther Rabba. We have Ruth Rabba, which was ready in time for Shavuot. And we have Shira Shirim Rabba, and we're working on, on more. So, um, so that's a text that um, keep your eyes out for. We keep announcing as they get finished. Um, and those are really nice. Um, we have... Um, uh, also on the the source sheet, uh, the sheet that I um, that I made to go with this, there is a link to all of these new um, all of these new texts. So you don't have to remember where I found them. So and I'm kind of cheating. So um, this is a great text. It's in English. Safer Daniel: Opportunity in Exile by Chaim Yachter, who wrote this along with his students, which I think is beautiful. Um, and if you open this up and you see, you can um, see that like he'll, he'll attribute something to a student or a question that a student had. And I really never before have seen a teacher who writes uh, a published work along with his students. And um, so that's really, really nice. Um, it's a commentary is guided by Rav Yaakov Maidan's book entitled Daniel Galut Vahit Galut um, and incorporates questions and insights from his students. Um, we've also added a complete English translation um, of Shivchei Haran, a biography of Rabbi Nachman of Braslav. So before we were on, uh, we were talking about uh, Rabbi Nachman's works, and we now have um, this work, which is composed by Nathan Sternhardt, and it's a biography. It was written by his student, um, and we have this also in a complete um, translation. These are from the, some new works that we've added from the Breslov Research Institute. Um, this work was written in the early 19th century. For Hebrew speakers, we have um, some works by Rav Shagar, who is a modern, I mean, he's not living anymore, but um, a modern uh, Torah scholar. And um, if you look at his page, you can see a bunch of things to see about him and that he's a religious Zionist thinker and um, Torah scholar and religious postmodern thinker in the 20th and 21st centuries. Um, and so there's a lot of really good stuff here that you might uh, be a text that you wouldn't have found otherwise. Um, and one more that I want to show you, and this is um, this is commentary on Shira Shirim on the Song of Songs by Rabbi Ezra Ben Shlomo. 
Hmm. Okay, it's not going to find it that way. Um, let's find it. Let's go to Shira Shirim. Um, and if I go, no, well, that's not the way I need to do it either. Okay, well, the link is there somewhere. Um, I think I closed on my thing where it is. Uh, but we can find it this way. So we're going to go to Tanakh. If you go all the way to the bottom, this is a good thing to know too, you have all of the commentaries. So for Tanakh, and since this is a modern commentary, it's going to be at the bottom. So first we had the Rishonim, the earlier, mid, um, the medieval ones, the Achronim are the modern, and then we have the modern modern, which we call modern. Um, and here we should find... Um, it's interesting that I'm not finding it, but uh, maybe Chava will find the link and then put, put it the in link. the chat. I put the link in the chat for everyone. <laughs> oh, it's not a live webinar if you don't like make one mistake. It's um, um, Ezra Ben Solomon on Song of Songs. Oh, okay. Ezra Ben. So, oh, there it is. Look at that. And this is a really interesting text. And it has a, a trans, the translation. Oh, that's why I didn't find it in modern because it's not modern. The translation is new. Um, the translation is a 20th century translation by Professor Seth Brody. It's from the 1100s. So no wonder I couldn't find it under modern. Okay, so here, these are some brand new um, texts that we think you might be interested in. But I wanna show you a couple other ways to find texts right on the site. Um, so we talked about the text tab and topics a little bit, um, but I'd like to go to the community page. And on the community page, you can see um, the top part over here on the left is some curated sheets that we, we curate for you that we think that people might be interested in. We always have uh, at least a one sheet on the Torah portion. And if it's in English, then it's gonna be the outside of Israel Torah portion. If you're on the Hebrew website, that it will be the Israel Torah portion, which only matters, uh, will be back together again later in July. Um, so here's a sheet that you could click on and learn from. Um, it always will give you a summary so you know what it is if it interests you. Um, sometimes we have something on the calendar. Um, sometimes when it's a quieter calendar time, we might not have a calendar one. This year, because it's a Shemitah year, we've been featuring Shemitah sheets. So here's a sheet about Shemitah that you might be interested in. And then we have something that um, is more heavy on Talmud. And um, so this one's the Chavruta learning through difference. So, um, so that's a place to find uh, things. And also here we have the newest sheets that uh, these are the recently published. So if you wanna see what people are writing and making public now, you can scan through here. You also can find if there's somebody that you um, have enjoyed that person's work, you can follow them and you'll get notified every time they publish a sheet. And here are always some suggestions and then collections, which are generally organizations that have made sheets and put them together. Um, and this is also a nice way to find things that you're interested in. Um, so for instance, um, we, we do a lot of them for different holidays. Um, but you might want to find something like um, uh, Grow Toro, which is a environmental uh, group that has lessons. They have sheets. Um, Rabbi Yitz Greenberg has sheets. Um, different organizations have their own um, sheets and you can click on them. Jewish Studio Project, this is an interesting group, tells you about who they are and their sheets. So this is another way that you can find some uh, something worthwhile to learn on Safari. We have so much that we know it's a little bit hard for people to find things. And so we've tried to kind of help point you in the right direction. Um, another way to find some interesting things that not everybody knows about, I'm gonna go back to this week's Torah portion. Um, so I'm gonna click on it and go to the Torah portion. And I'm gonna start on the second verse. And on the side here, we. We talked in 101 about the commentaries and about the connections, but if you go um, lower, we have sheets. And these are sheets that people have made and made public 
that contain this highlighted verse. And there are 57 of them that have this verse. Um, and I looked at actually this sheet um, by Rabbi Scott Gelman, and um, you can open it up. It takes you to where the verse that you picked, but you can go up to the top. And he wrote, and, and if I wanna know who he is, I can click on his name. Um, in this case, he did not write who he is, but some people, and if you're doing this, it's really nice if you fill out your profile so that people can know who you are if you make a sheet. Um, but Rabbi Gelman did not choose to do that, which is his prerogative. Um, and he has a text and he brings in other texts. And um, you could also have, this one has some illustrations and learning about the menorah because that's mentioned in this week's Torah portion. So there are a lot of, of um, sheets that you can um, access that way. Another thing below sheets, we have web pages. You can see there's even more of them. And these are websites that use our linker and we can, they pull us into their site and we pull them back into ours. And so um, these are a more developed, more sophisticated uh, work. It's more edited and, than, than maybe somebody's sheet. And it's a variety, a wide variety of organizations. I'm gonna show you um, a couple. One is My Jewish Learning, which has very nice basic sheets for more for people who are just um, beginning their journey in Jewish texts. Although uh, just if you want the basics, anybody, it's really good. Um, so um, I had looked at, not seeing the one that I had looked at, but I really any of them, we could open them up. This is talking about Hanukkah because it's talking about the menorah. So, um, so you can see what it looks like. You go immediately to their site and you can see that um, they've written something about this and any place that they mention a text is linked also to us. Um, another one uh, is the Lair House. Let's see if I can find it. They're not alphabetical. Um, but here's the Lair House, which is um, a very nice journal of, um, and here we have one that Svi Sinensky, who writes a lot of sheets on Safaria, but he also writes for the Lair House. And he wrote Searching for the Vatican's Menorah. And while I was, I was researching this to, um, to, do, to show you, I of course had to get sucked into the article because it was really, really interesting about where these, where the things from the temple are. So, um, so you can find a lot of really interesting material in the web pages on the side. Um, I wanna show you a couple other things. Um, if you go to manuscripts, we have for Tanakh, for Tanakh, our Hebrew source is the Leningrad Codex, which is from 1008, the year 1008. Um, and if I click on it, I can now see the page of um, of the Torah or of the Bible, of the Tanakh, how it looks in the Leningrad Codex. Not many people get to see the Leningrad Codex this close up because I believe that it is in Leningrad. Um, but you can see it and you can see how, how it was written. We also have manuscripts for the Babylonian Talmud. We have three different manuscripts so you can see the development of the print. Um, we also have for the Jerusalem Talmud and we have some really, really beautiful um, manuscripts, illustrate, uh, illuminated manuscripts for the four sons in the Haggadah um, that come from the National Library of Israel. And those you would find in the Haggadah and they are really, really great. Um, another resource for you while you're studying is Torah readings. This is just for the Torah. We have every verse of the Torah. Um, we have a, a recording of somebody chanting that. Um, so if I click on it, and then I were to press play, you would hear the person chanting that, Torah, that verse of the Torah. So if you'd like to hear a, uh, a, a um, if you'd like to hear a person chant it, that, that's how you would do that. Um, and and um, one other thing here, we've done topics from the top where we're putting in the topic, but you can also go the other way. So let's say I'm on this verse and I'm kind of wondering you know, what, what goes with this verse? I can click on the side to topics and we have six topic pages that include this, this verse in it. So if I click on it, I see lighting of the menorah, the temple menorah, light, Hanukkah, the Parsha, the Torah portion, the Halotcha and Hanukkah menorah. So um, you could have a verse that you don't really, 
like, okay, that's a nice verse, but what does it connect to? And you can find that um, uh, on the side. So if I were to open the Temple Menorah page, now I have a whole uh, topics page with all sorts of, here was the, here's the source that we had, but other sources on that topic. I'll stop for questions one more time, and then I'll show you some tools that you might not have seen. We don't, we don't have, have any questions in the chat right now, but if anyone okay. has one, please let us know. We're happy to answer your questions, review something that you missed or didn't quite get. Uh, so just let us know. But in the meantime, I'm going to go on to another. This is something that people who don't take the webinars don't always know. And so I'm going to show you um, about the dictionaries. So, and we have a really big improvement on our dictionaries that I want to share with you also. Usually at this point, I say that the dictionaries are for web only or for a while they were iOS only. Now, everybody on the apps, whether you're Android or iOS, whether you're the website, everybody gets to use the dictionaries. So that is a really, we're very excited about that. So I'm going to go just anywhere um, and so there are different ways that I can open the, I can find a, a, a definition. So I need to have the resource panel open. As I said, it's always a good idea to have the resource panel open. Um, but let's say I would like to look up a word. So what I'm going to do on the website is I'm gonna double click on the word. So I double clicked on Vayikach and now I have on the side, I have um, the entry. This one happens to be the entry from, uh, we have a dictionary that's on a Tanakh dictionary. Um, and there I have my entry my, uh, of it. Now, if I'm on, my, on the apps, if I'm on my phone or my iPad, I'm not gonna double click, I'm gonna do a long press, which means that you put your finger on it and you leave it there for a little bit until it pops up, till the definition pops up. So it's not a tap, it's a long press. Um, you could do one word at a time. So if I wanna do another one, I just double click again and it will give me my definition. Sometimes it will say that we don't have, that there isn't a definition for that, that happens too. Um, to me, that's the best way to use um, the dictionary, but I will show you that you could do other things as well. You can also use the search bar um, in the resource panel. So um, I can click on the side, a dictionary, and then I have search dictionary. So I could have copy and pasted or typed the word in there, or I could type it with a Hebrew uh, thing, but I, I kind of feel like if I could double click, why would I want to type? But you can do that if you'd like to. Um, and um, also from the library page, um, if you want to do some browsing, you could do go to the reference and you can see we have the Jastro, we have the Klein, um, and we have other reference books that probably people don't know about so much. It's worth it to look and see all these different reference works that we have. But you could also, um, let's say I wanna look up something in the gesture and I, I could pick a letter and then I could scroll down. I mean, again, um, it's not maybe the most efficient, but there could be reasons why people would like to do that. Um, another great reference tool um, is if you're studying Let's go to Mishnah. We haven't done that in a bit. So um, let's say I'm, I'm going to go to Hebrew. I like to get Hebrew English. Okay, so I'm going to open my resource panel and I'm going to um, take my cursor. And I see here that if you look in the English or in the Hebrew, it says that Beit Shammai said something. And I would maybe like to know, well, who is Beit Shammai? So if I, if I put my cursor over it and there's a dotted line on the bottom, that means that there's a biography for that person. I could do it also in, in the English. So I'm going to um, double click. And on the side, I will read about who is Beit Hillel. And the same thing with, I'll do it in Hebrew now, who is Beit Shammai. And again, all of this can be in Hebrew or in English, but I'm on the English site, so it's doing English. Um, so as you go along, as you're reading and learning in Talmud or Mishnah, it will mention other rabbis. Here's Rabbi Ishmael. And so I click on it and it will tell me when he lived um, and tell me a little bit about him. So um, that works for the Talmud. 
and for the Mishnah. Um, Rachel, and, can you yes. show us what this looks like in the um, when you're on the Hebrew site? Uh, sure. So um, let's go now to change to Hebrew site. Um, is if you're logged in, you go to your profile page and you click Ivrit. And now I'm going to be in the Hebrew site. And um, so on the Hebrew site also, you can, you know, you can have English on the Hebrew site too. But um, here's Rabbi Yishmael. Um, let me see. Um, let me see, find somebody. Uh, here's Beit Shammai. So it's the same, exact same thing. I double click it. Why didn't he show up? Okay, well, okay. Um, let's try Beit Hillel. Hmm. Okay, well, let's try somebody else just to give you one more, but Rabbi Ishmael did work. Um, here's Rabban Gamliel. Let's see if we do better with Rabban, with Rabban Gamliel. Yeah, there you go. Now, sometimes it's not clear which one it is. So in that case, which I just got out of, it's gonna say that it's not clear um, and it's gonna give you some choices. So, but that's how it looks on the Hebrew side. And I'm gonna go back now to the English. Okay, how's that? Um, I'm gonna show you another nice feature on the side. Sometimes you might wanna connect, you wanna compare two texts, have them side by side, but they're not connected within our site. Our site will connect them if one quotes the other, but there might be other reasons that you want to connect something. So for instance, I might want to um, put side by side because I'm studying, let's say um, the golden calf and there's sort of two versions. Um, so I know, cause I looked this up before, 32.1 is one of them. And this is the narrative of talking about what happened with the golden calf. And I might want to, but then later on in the same chapter, then Aaron, uh, Moses says to Aaron, you know, what did you do? And um, he starts telling the story and he tells it a little bit differently. And so it's really interesting to compare these two texts and it's easier to compare them if I have them side by side. So in the resource panel, I click on compare text and it gives me a whole other um, table of contents. So I click on Tanakh and I click on Exodus and I click on chapter 32. And so far it's the same thing as what I had over there. But, um, but starting at, at verse 23, he starts telling the story. And there are some significant differences. And a lot of commentators have talked about that and why, why, um, you know, why are there differences? Why did he do that? And so having them side by side and you can compare them together, um, then uh, it's, that gives you a whole other way to study, um, which is really nice. So that's something that you can do. Another thing that you can do is that you can also um, leave notes for yourself. Let's say, oh, I guess I did this before. Let's say um, I want to, I had an insight that I want to remember later on. If you're logged in, if you have an account and you're logged in on the side, it will say notes and you click on it. And um, so here I had written a note before. Um, here's my note. It says compared to Exodus 32, 23. So it reminds me that I want to take this verse and I want to compare over there. These are private to me. Um, I could leave another note if I want to. Um, I could, um, you know, whatever I want, I could write my note and I click on it and it will show me um, just how it shows me how many connections there are and how many sheets there are. It will show me if there are any notes. So now I know that on this verse, I had a note. Um, so there's a lot that you could do with that. You must be logged in to have that. Um, another uh, helpful thing is the share button. So when a, um, if I wanna share this verse with somebody else, or I could do a, a, I could do more than one, I highlight what I wanna share. So let's say I wanna share these two verses, I click share and it gives me the URL, which I could either copy and put someplace or I could share directly to Facebook, Twitter or an email. Let's say you're part of a discussion on Facebook and somebody, you know, says something and you have an opinion, but you wanna raise the conversation a little bit and back it up with a text, you can do that this way. You can say what you say and then um, share the, the URL um, and um, 
and right away people see the verse, they can go right into Safaria and, and read it themselves. Um, now also brand new, we have the preview that will show is much more attractive and the quoted text is on a background. I don't know if you've ever noticed that all of our texts are color, uh, color coordinated by, uh, by um, category. So if it's a, well, I actually don't know all the names of colors. So I don't know, I would call, I, I have a limited color vocabulary, but um, Tanakh would be navy, Talmud would be gold. Um, and that's the way your preview would look, which is kind of a nice thing. Um, another thing that um, we always like to hear is, um, is feedback. So this is on the side again in the resource panel. When, uh, here we go. Um, you can give us feedback on the, this is where if you find the same thing on the app, if you find a mistake, sometimes there are mistakes and we appreciate you calling our attention to it so that we can correct them. You click on feedback and you select the type of feedback. So report an issue with the text. Um, if there's a typo, um, if there's anything, you just, you do that. And this is the best way to do it because automatically it's gonna include the URL, which helps our correction team to find the place that you found the mistake. So if you write us, we'll get there too, but this, this is the, the quickest, best way to do that. You can request a translation. You can report a bug. That's very helpful to us. A lot of times we learn about what's going on from our users. So if something's not working for you, please report it. Um, usually we'll get a few at a time and know that it's something critical that we should do right away. Sometimes it's something that um, we just let our engineers know and they'll get to it. Um, they'll decide where it falls in the scope of what they're working on. Um, get help, that takes you to the hello site where you can ask any questions that you want and we'll get back to you on to request a feature as well. We'd like to hear what you're interested in. If you're requesting a feature, it helps us the most if you explain why you would like that feature, how you would like to use it. That really helps our designer to know what, what people are doing and to understand why this feature would be helpful. And he can try to decide and the whole team tries to decide, um, is this something that um, we feel will be really helpful to everybody and that we want to put time into doing. Um, also in the advanced part here, you can add a translation. Um, so if you've translated something um, and you'd like to add it as a communi Safari, a community translation, you can add it there um, or also a connection. If you think something should be connected, you can do that. Um, and then another very fun thing is if this is a great reason to have a an account and to, to work while you're logged in. If you click on your profile, this is, a, this is a group account. This is our whole education department. So I'm not taking credit for all of this learning, but if you click on Torah Tracker, which I'm gonna click on, might take a second, especially because I'm on Zoom at the same time. Um, it will tell me what I've been doing on Safari and it will tell me what I've been learning. And it will, also, um, it will also compare me to the typical Safari user. So here we go. Here is my overall activity from the previous year. Um, so how many texts were read? How many sheets were read? How many sheets were created? This is a little high. It's not one person. And we are always on the site. Um, it divides it by category. So it tells me what percent of the time. So you can see that we were... 40% of the time on Tanakh. Um, and the average Safari user is 41%. So I guess we're pretty average. Um, we were a little bit under on Talmud. And here we have all the different categories and um, it doesn't really necessarily matter what the average user is doing, but it kind of can tell me, I might want to say, oh, I've been a little bit too much in one. Maybe I want to up another category. Tells me my top category and compared to the average Safari user. Oh, look, we're way ahead in Midrash. And that's because we prepared some materials on Midrash. So we were there way more than everybody else. Um, it tells us our favorite text, which you can see we were working on Esther Rabba, So we were there a lot um, and our favorite sheets. Um, so, and our most popular sheets. So the sheets that we've made that are most popular with other people. So this is a lot of fun. You can also do your all time learning. So that's also very fun. I will stop for
questions and um, and then if we have time, I can show you a couple more things. So um, a quick question about Hebrew as well. Um, just wanting to know if all of the resources and tools that you've been talking about are also available on the Hebrew site. Yes, and everything will just be flipped. If you're on the Hebrew side, it'll just, everything, everything is the same. Yes. Great. Um, any other questions? Okay, well, I'm going to jump in because I want to show you one more very, very fun thing. And that is our Torah tab. And the Torah tab, um, to get it, you again, I'm on the, the home page and I'm scrolling down. And on the bottom right, it says Torah tab. And I'm going to click on that. And I can install it for Chrome or for Firefox. I'm on Chrome right now. And what happens, I'm going to try and do it even though I'm on We'll see, I do this at the end because I'm on Zoom and sometimes that gets a little crazy. But I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to Chrome, my Torah, and, and I'm going to add the extension. And now every time that I open a new tab, I'm going to open a new tab, uh, it will open something for me to read. I can have it, right now it's set on random. So I'll open another tab and it gives me another text that I might just be interested in reading. Or maybe every time I open a tab, I want to go to the Parsha. So I'm going to open another tab. Oh, then it will always open it to the Parsha. Um, it can open to uh, Daf, we, it, can, it can just, this is to Daf Yomi. It will open to every time I open a new tab. So um, this is fun, something that's very fun to have on your um, on your computer. And if you open a lot of tabs, then you can, it'll keep giving you something new to learn, which is, um, is a very fun thing. Um, I want to also mention um, that Safari, all of the things that I have shown you and everything on Safari is free of charge, including all of the, all of the texts and um, all of the um, help that you can get, all of the webinars, all of the, everything that we're doing, um, everything is, is um, free of charge. And it's all supported by our wonderful um, donors. We are a nonprofit. And um, if you're interested in knowing how to donate, there are many different ways. We have this beautiful on the bottom here. Also, I have a link on the sheet um, that tells about, we have a, a, a um, Sponsor a day of learning, a one-time gift, becoming a sustainer, that is a monthly gift, um, sponsoring text, all different ways, all your questions um, can be answered there. Um, another thing I wanna say before, before we leave is that I just flew through so many things. And um, I know for myself, when I learn something and I watch somebody and it makes a lot of sense, I'm like, oh, I've got this. And then I sit in front of the computer and it's like, ugh, I forgot. So a few things to help you. One is the sheet that we, um, that we gave you the link to and that we'll be sending out along with the recording. And also we have help sheets. If you look on your profile button, um, you go to help and we have a whole bunch of sheets that are on many different topics and you can click on them and they have instructions and images to help you. You also always can write to hello at safaria.org. That is our helpline. Um, that's for anything, any questions that you have about, about Safari, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, if you have um, anything, you can, can write there. Also, we have um, our mailing list, which I'm sure many of you are on, that sends information to keep up with everything and also following us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we love to be in touch with all of you. And I thank you for spending an hour of your day with us today. And if you have questions, I can stay on and take them. And if not, then- um, I have a question, I have a oh, question. Go ahead. If I'm learning with somebody, I'm in New York for the summer and, and my friend I wanna learn with is in Florida. Is there a way to do that together? Like we can learn yes. together? Yeah. Yes, there is. I'm going to share my. Screen. I'm going to show you. I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to go to. So you're going to open your text. So maybe we're going to do. 
We're doing uh, Pure Chaos. Okay, but I'm going to pretend that you're doing Duff Yomi because okay. I'm here. Okay, <laughs> so um, yeah. in, the, in the resource panel, where all the goodies are, um, you can click on Chavruta. Now you must be, you have to have an account and be logged in and your I do. partner also has to. And you click on that and now you have a link and you um, can copy that link or also I could just open my Bait Midrash. Rachel, I'm logged in if you wanna send me the link and we can show how it works. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So um, how do you want me to send you the link? Um, you can uh, private send it or Slack it, whichever works best for you. I do that because I'm on, <laughs> I forgot everyone's seeing my screen. Um, okay. So I'm going to, where's do my- Do it in the, <laughs> the chat, um, yeah, the Zoom chat. Here in chat. Okay, well, okay, wait one second. I'm gonna put it in the chat and I'm gonna put it to Chava, sorry. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and share my screen again. Okay, so I shared that link. And uh, this might be a problem because we're on Zoom. So usually what we should have here is we should have me in a, uh, like a video and Chava in the video. And we would both have the text open and we would, um, <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. okay, there I there <laughs> You You can mute it on the um, Havruta. You can mute yourself so there isn't an echo um, just on the left side of my video there. Uh, on the bottom left of the video. Yeah, that should be the mute option. No, it didn't give it to you. I, I'm going to end it because it's going to be bad, but that's the idea. And um, it's just because I'm on Zoom also, and I'm sharing my screen. There's so much going on, but we would be able to see each other and we both would have the text. We both could then once we're on the text, it, it's, we're not synced to the text. So, um, so uh, like if I'm learning with Chava, she could go open one commentary and I open something else, but at least we start out, we're on the same text and we can see each other. And it's a great way to learn together. It's called Chavruta and it's on the side and there's a help sheet about it. So if you went into the, on the, uh, into the help collection, um, there's a sheet on how to do Chavruta. I highly recommend it, it's great. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you so much for joining us today. And, um, yeah, I'm glad that you, I hope everybody's learned something new. And even I learned something new, even while I'm giving it. So there's always something to new, learn new at Safaria. So thank you so much. And bye. Thanks for joining us.